Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Stellaris, the Life Seated series. I'm your host, Carlos Vade, and it's episode 5. It's the year 2301. This is what we look like, the Valorum Empire. This is what the whole map looks like. The whole galaxy. Life Seated, very neat. You can't really colonize anything on your own without first forming some immigration packs with other people because the planets are all red so they're not good candidates for you <clears throat> to colonize so it was a really neat start as far as starts go to the game this has probably been my favorite thing unspent civics points yeah because we don't have enough influence i really like the start i played this same exact faction in a different game not on YouTube and I've played it almost out to completion there are a couple things that annoy me about it but I do really like this start let's take a look at our empire and see what's going on this planet needs more jobs so this is a food and I figured out finally I have finally agreed upon a <clears throat> naming scheme for my planets that I really like in brackets the first letter determines what the buildings are going to mostly be, in this case research, and the second letter determines what the districts are mostly going to be, in this case food. It doesn't mean it's exclusive to food. It means that if we have plenty, if the housing works out just right, we may decide to put some energy buildings down or minerals, but the focus is going to be on that right there. Food and the buildings are going to be focused on research, so I've, I've I've been using this in uh, a different game and I really like it. This gets changed. It's not administration, it's B for bureaucracy and food on this planet. I need the A for alloys. Because uh, this ended up really helping with not just robots, but species that were tailored through through gene tailoring, through gene splicing, to do certain jobs. So it ended up being really useful. So I'm, I've am i settled on this. I like it a lot. Like this one right here, Stenlar Prime. So this is easy. This becomes alloys and energy. And right at a glance, then I can tell what the heck a colony is going to do. Um, I haven't made up my mind on that one. This one's going to be food. And what's its primary thing going to be? C, C for consumer goods. Oops, but you got to have the bracket in there. So I really like this. After playing a whole entire game with this, I've really decided that's what I like. Um, now, what did I, I'd have to go back and look at the video for this. T-MA, hmm. Okay, administrative offices are going to be on it. Oh, and what's the T for though? What did I put the T for down? Hmm, that's gonna be really interesting to figure that one out. Well, I can tell you what it's gonna do. This one's going to have bureaucracy on it, and then it's also going to have mining. All right, and then this frontier sector down here is mining and consumer goods. Great. So then I have a, I like this a lot because then I can just look at this over here and get a real good fix for. I've got two bureaucracy planets. I've got two research planets because my my home world is going to be focused on research when it's done. And in fact, uh, what do we have here? What's it making right now? Assembling miners. Okay. So that's going to be good. We don't have... What else do we have? Um, those are all the different species. Okay. Farmers, farmers, fast robots, miners. We've got two of those guys. We have to change over at some point in time. That Applying that template still requires, if we want to apply that template to those robots that we want to do, for instance, miners, and apply it to the two robots. It still is going to take too long, Situation isn't it? Long. Five yeah. months. Yeah, I don't really want to mess with that. That's okay, we'll do it. We'll get it out of the way. Um, but at any rate, I like this naming scheme. In a real quick glance, we can look at things. Now what we have is we got, we're going to have two planets with research, two with bureaucracy, one with alloys, two with consumer goods, which is, which is good. Um, we're probably going to need more consumer goods. That's the one thing I'm finding you really need a lot of. So 
this colony may end up being a consumer goods planet. We'll figure out what to do with it in a little bit as it kind of matures. That's kind of one of the fun parts. The bureaucracy planets, though. These guys... What do we have? Oh, we have stuff. Okay, I'm going to upgrade that building because... What we need to do after we create this city for the housing is we need to put this dude to work. Now, he's going to go to work as a clerk, but then we'll bump him up when we get this administration part done. Um, we need to get out of this problem up here. So. Alright, and then let's take a look at Initial species. Okay, nobody, nobody hates us, but there are a couple people that don't really like us. The Boki Hive and the Republic of Yeheem. Sounds like a, it's like a Michael Jackson thing. The Republic of Yeheem, where are they? They're right there and they're kind of like medium and they're superior. And what do we have? We have an available envoy that we can assign. Special project concluded. Okay. Got Completed modification of the minor space? Really? They did that that fast? It seems... Outstanding. Um, proton launchers. Ooh, so sexy. Um, let's grab those. Republic of Yehim. And they got their borders closed right now. And then there's these guys over here. The Free Bos Pachuks. It sounds like a sneeze. The Free Bochuks Sneezies. They're at 51 and they're going down. They are harming our relations. We have. Uh, do we have an envoy with him then? Where, where are my envoys? Those are envoys. The Silicon Grid, the Stakashi Trade Union, and the Consolidated Zikmok Nations. Um, these guys, Federation Builders. Hmm. I think I'm just trying to get everybody to be as happy as possible. What are they? They like alpine worlds. Okay, before we decide who to make friends with next, let, let's take a look at what planets we need. Desert worlds, desert worlds, tropical worlds, and another desert world. I need a desert species. So, not those guys. These are fallen empires, and fallen empires seems like... A, oh, look at this. This is fanatic xenophobes and spiritualists. There's going to be a war in heaven, isn't there? I've never looked into exactly what it takes to cause a war in heaven, but it seems like those two ideologies would be kind of like at odds. So, um, what do we have here? Uri Divine Speaks. I wish you could see... I wish you could have it over this and it would tell you what they are. What does this say? O's Favors for... Ooh, that's a nice new little graphic. And this has Federation Association status with us. Yeah. So, let's look at him. Ocean world, okay. He's not a candidate. These guys already have migration treaties with. This one we have migration treaty with. And these guys we don't. Oh, they're machine intelligence. Silicon grid. We can't have an immigration. Oh, with opera migration treaty. They are gestalt consciousness. They cannot integrate with other societies. That's why. The Harmonious Collective. What about you guys? Alpine Worlds. Not... Not helpful. Republic of Yehim. Alpine World. Okay, that doesn't help. Uh, anybody else? Peaceful Traders. We already have a migration treaty with them, so it can't be them. Hegemonic Imperialists. They are Desert World. Oh, yeah. Great. So they're the free boss... It's the Sneezies. All right. So if we send this guy over here to them, let's see if we can get the Sneezies asked to be their best. Concluded. Okay. So now that changes things a little bit. So now offer migration treaty is still a thousand away because of oh, suspicious attitude. Well, let's see if his if that changes over time. Okay. An odd factor. They still have not affected. You had the whole DLC to put the Y on there. The whole time you're working on the DLC, you could have put the Y on there, and you didn't. We'll get into that conversation in a little bit. Um, we have these things. These are nice. Clone army special. I'd like to have that. Grand embassy complex available envoys. Ooh, I want that. 
I want that because I want more envoys. Um, all right, this. What do we have here? We don't have commercial zones. That's something we want to get on every planet. The colony here has a specialist. It's not doing anything. What do we have going on here? This 512. We can definitely afford that. Research oh, so let's see what we have on some of these planets. We still don't have. What are these? Radioactive wasteland. Minus 15% for our overseers. And our domination traditions are minus 33%. Okay, so that's not. That's not great. Rail gun. Yes, let's get that. Alright, so way over here. Um, the free. Because we wanted to come over here and we wanted to grab all this. And then the silicon grid, we were just like, we'll eventually take everything from you. Um, oh yeah, because there's planets over here. That's right, isn't there? Okay. So there's this neat stuff in here because there's gases right there. And then we wanted to come back here and take some of this. All, actually, all the way up to there would be great. I'm concerned about these guys. Uh, it seems impossible they'd be able to get that faster than us. Let's do this and then get this gas and then we can come back over this and do all kinds of stuff. Got plenty of time. One of the things that's been interesting, one of the things I really find interesting about this game altogether is every time I start a new faction like this, I then think of a different one I want to play and I get even more excited about wanting to play that next one. And uh, the next one I've been toying around with is um, Driven Assimilators because I've never played that style before. And now the only really good start that they have now is, uh, and it's a good one, is for Origins they have the Ring World. So I actually started one of those and started messing around with it to see how it played. And uh, so far quite interesting so I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna sell these and that okay what do we have for fleets we have pathetic fleets all right we have to fix some fleet stuff don't we we have a cruiser now so let's get that going um, let's do the first cruiser first that of course doesn't make any sense but yes this is what I like to do for the first cruiser first is the picket defense cruiser because this will be a ship that I'll use all the way through to the end of the game is the picket defense cruiser I like to use the cruisers is this a cruiser or a destroyer? Am I, what am I doing? yeah right there line tactics at 50 yeah, it's the cruiser. I like to use the cruisers for picket defense just because um, I feel like it's almost, I feel like it's kind of a waste to use a battleship for picket defense when you can, you need it for the big guns. Cruiser point defense or picket defense or however you want to call it. Now we get into the fun ones. Let's see, large. Large, medium, and medium. Right. Let's go, big baby. Coil guns, plasma guns. And I hope the microphone has been good to listen to. I, I keep trying to refine it. Um, I'm really looking at buying a new microphone, so I've been doing all kinds of research on Amazon trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to get. And messed around with... I noticed that it was clipping in certain places, so I've been messing around with the gate to get that just right. It's the, it's the ongoing, never-ending struggle. Okay, these guys can come off now because we have plasma throwers. Yes. Okay, excellent. And... We got a bunch of defense platforms. Okay. Cool. 
So let's go look at this fleet. Where is this at? They're right there at Born Prime. I want you guys to. This is one of the things that irked me this week is that um, on a Facebook group that I'm a member of, I decided to mention how this 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 irks me that this doesn't work here. The reinforced fleet button in many cases doesn't work correctly, and sometimes it treats ships in here like a phantom and uh and it won't order it'll either order the incorrect number of ships or it'll order too many of them and then you end up with all these straggler ships over here and and what bothered me about having this dialogue on facebook was that i thought this is a reasonable complaint to have because this should do its job this button should do its job well you should be able to go in here and say, hey, I want this and this. And I'd like to have several more cruisers like this. Point defense destroyer. And you should be able to set all this up like this. Like, let's just load this sucker up. I don't want all the point defense ones. I want two of those. And I want a bunch of the kinetic ones. You should be able to do this toward the end of the game when you've got ships when you got fleets that are 230k and you've got eight or ten of them running around and it can get very very difficult to deal with all that because as you're fighting the giant war little tiny corvettes are getting killed and destroyers are getting killed and all this stuff and you're thinking man i just want to go in here and click this button and have it reinforced and send the fleets to me and have them automatically join and have it work and it doesn't and if you played the game, you know it doesn't. It's just not precise, which is a problem. I think it's a legitimate complaint to have. I'm not trashing the game. I love the game. I have almost a thousand hours into it now. I like Paradox games, which I'll get to it later on. Also, I'm playing a whole ton now of um, Battletech. Loving it. Paradox and Harebrain Schemes. We'll talk more about that later. I also love Harebrain Schemes. It's a great little indie studio. They're fantastic. I played their Shadowrun games and they're just they're off the charts great for a little studio. But this this button here, that should be one of the most quintessential simple things in the game. It should just work. Oh, and here's the bulky high of sin. We're gonna complain about you. Initial colonization phase. It should just work, and it doesn't. And I think that's just a legitimate complaint. I'm not hating on the game. I'm saying instead of Paradox working on something like perhaps Espionage, which one or two people maybe want to see. Okay, maybe it's more than one or two, but still. I'd like to see all the bugs fixed first. But it's amazing to me the things that people will defend about a broken game. They will defend brokenness, and I don't know whether it's because... I, I honestly don't know what it is. I don't know why you would defend something that was broken, but that was one of the first responses I got on this Facebook group, was someone defending a broken feature. And I just wanted to pull my hair out. Because it's like, if... Here, here's Paradox with this fantastic game, Stellaris, and they have mega corporations in them, and they're talking about things like brand loyalty. If you don't think brand loyalty is a real thing, watch someone defend a broken mechanic in a game. It is mind-boggling to the nth degree. It's so crazy. Forces reduce crime, capital buildings, add housing. I don't really care or that about that. Uh, what did I want over here? None of these are... Domination is not exciting. Um, I'd actually kind of like to have Supremacy or Prosperity. Why did I grab Domination next? City districts provide one additional housing. City districts provide one additional clerk job. Special pops, 5%. Ugh, this is so much better. Why did I grab this? For enforcers? Reducing crime? Can't be serious. Resources from workers is 5% and resources, specialist pop resource here is 5%. I'm going to also adopt prosperity. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry to get the next 
Ascension perk. We got Xeno compatibility, which is great. Imperial prerogative, admin administration capacity. This is only semi important. And in my other game, I took something else besides this, and I think it went better. Um, there's still some pretty good choices. You want you want engineered evolution, and uh, you want the arcology project. And then uh, evolutionary mastery is nice, but it's not a must-have. Master builders, galactic wonders. So that's where we're going with this. But any rate, at any rate, just research concluded. I find it highly annoying when you make a legitimate complaint about something, and and you're making that complaint out of love because you want the game to be better. Concluded. And then here comes some buffoon along defending the brokenness of the mechanic and I just I will never ever ever understand that and probably because I also work in a business where something being broken is not good I work in business software and if something doesn't work it's like the end of the world for people you, you just can't have it you can't do that so you have to fix those kinds of things. I really want these tile blockers, but I also really want some more habitability. Uh, let's get that because what we're going to do is check here the free boss Petrick's Union. They're weaker, should be a little concerned, but they're uh, they're not going to form a migration treaty with us. So we gave them an envoy, and now they're like. Oh, now it's getting better. Good. We are improving our relations. Because you know what, guys? They're not going to give us a migration treaty, though. They're too far away from that. That is too impossible for them. We have lost a governor. Oh, we got a research one. Okay, so Valorum Prime has two research things. And then the other research is on this agro world. Let's make Valorum Prime's research matter more because they have more researchers. And then on this other planet, this other system, let's see if we can get research. We can't. We can get food. So there's two planets there that are focusing on food, BF and RF, these two. So we're going to grab the food person and put that on there. And we're going to go down to here. This governor is leader lifespan and leader experience gain. At this point in time, we just chuck him because he's not... He's not helping. This has food, minerals, and it also has um, administration, bureaucracy. This is just going to give us house and some constructions. And then over here, where is this at? It's right there. And where is that one at? This one's way over here. It's by, it's, these two are by themselves. They're dancing by themselves. Dancing with my son. Okay. So, oh, and that one's not done yet. Okay, so what we're going to do here is give that one a sector and give it the house, dude. And then this one all by itself over here. Give it a little sector and say, mm -hmm. clear blocker cost. Do we have blockers to clear on there? Do we have a lot of blockers? I don't see any. We got none. So let's just go with somebody else. Let's go with the crime person, a young one, 29. He'll be corrupt in a few years. Um, on this planet as well. So we've got gene clinics and uh, robot assembly plants. The two things we want to have out early. We need commercial zones. This, let's see. Amenities. Food from jobs, minus 20%. Yeah, well, we're not going to put food on this planet anyway. Um... <clears throat> thinking 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 we got plenty of food all these planets need to have food decision on them to help them grow every single one of them because we have plenty of food to do that with it's one of the nice things is that while you have some food do it You kind of don't have to worry so much about it. System capital complex, and then we got to do something here. 
11 housing. That's not going to be enough in the long run. Um, let's do that. Oh, I need to get a colony destination, so. We'll do that. Keep working on, uh, we got 7 of 12 star base capacity. Keep working on pulling trade toward us. And the ship up here has to get all of that. So anyway, I just find it irritating that people will defend broken junk. So, what for? Why? Why did you do that? Why would you defend the broken junk? Research concluded. Alright, so we're back. Had to do a little texting there in the middle of recording that episode. Becoming something that's very important to do. Stay in touch with people during this time of self-sequestering or quarantine or whatever you want to call it. This this world got done, so I quickly added mining district, city district, a couple more mining districts, set it up as a colony, so that one's done. That uh, adds to that spot. And uh, let's see, what do we have? We have four envoys now. If we can get that tech set up. When's that tech get done? It is done. We just have to build the thing somewhere. Um, okay. That becomes an interesting prospect then. This has a couple things we can remove. For instance, we can get rid of the gene clinics. And we can replace that with the thing. Where is it? Oh, did I not take that tech? I'm, I'm already losing my mind. That's it. I thought I'd already did that technology. Mm. Okay, I must not have. I must not have chose that. Uh, build that building that gives you the the two extra envoys. Okay. Well then, that's where we're at. We got our fleet right here. We have the one shipyard. Another day, another scientific breakthrough. Okay. Where are the rest of the ships? Well, this is going to be interesting, isn't it? Their habitat. I want those. What? Floral fascination. Several plants native to Hakrai Prime were recently established a colony, exude copious amounts of pollen with an astounding chemical complexity. A special research project has been prepared for further study of the flora. Great. So, algae season wasn't bad enough. Discoveries. Uh, advanced reactor booster. Let's see. Energy Nexus, okay. I do want the neutron launchers. <laughs> I do want those. <laughs> Let's grab those, because they're kind of so important. Um, what is this? Flora study available. Track on map. Needs a science person. Okay. Valorum. And this one is, okay. Where's this one? Right there. Right, I want you to go here and do this project. And you, what's this thing up here? Can you do that? Yes, go do that. What about this one? Can you do that one? Nope, that's something else. What is in this system? What is this? Resume process, dismantle equipment, the elusive tar black. What do I need to do that with? Abandon terraforming. Dismantle equipment available or resume process. Let's resume process and see what happens. Alright, so these planets up here, if we were going to colonize them, are at 65% because who would we colonize them with? These clowns, they like arid worlds. They're not quite great. They might be the best we can do if we can get another five percent. We get the Republic of Ehim, Ehe, and the Free Bos Achu. <laughs> it's special project concluded. All right, let's see what the world has been terraformed into a different habitat. Rankchon Prime. What's it been terraformed into? An arid world. It's great. Okay. Who's going to grow on this? 
It's been tra terraformed in the Aaron world, so hopefully the Vangrel. You guys are the, you guys Special are the best. You're the, you're the ones. If I switch that over, I lose what? Yeah, twenty percent pop growth speed, you guys. All right. You did that great. You can go back to here. Assist the research. Remarkable olfactory arousal. Long-term exposure to the pollen naturally occurring, and Hawkeye Prime's atmosphere acts on the colonist pheromone receptors with mild aphrodisiac effect, accompanied by a barely perceptible high. The plant that produces the most potent strain is a flower common to all areas of the planet. Squirreled away in some obscure taxonomy nook by scientists on Hawkeye Prime, but known in the local Vlorium Empire dialect as Maren Karen. Oh, Karen. <laughs> That's awesome. Happiness plus 10%. Great. Yeah. Um, Construction project concluded. Great. So, Research concluded. what I want to do is go get this. I was going to, I mentioned earlier, and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about it because some of these videos I do get very conversational. Climate restoration. Oh, nice. Yeah. Things we need. I'm going to grab this. I want the flagella. Um, Harebrain schemes and Battletech. Um, I bought Battletech when it first came out because as a PC gamer who's been around since 1993, playing PC games, of course, those of us back in the day, um, one of the best, most fun games to play were the Mech Warrior games. And then, of course, you know, Battletech is. I guess slightly different than Mech Warrior. Mech Warrior was, but anyway, it's to me it's all the same thing. Even though you know people are like BattleTech is a role-playing game on a tabletop, and you know, but okay, whatever. To me, they're all giant mechs. They're awesome. They're fun. You know, BattleTech is in computer games has always been the strategy turn. It's like XCOM with mechs, and Mech Warrior was always, you know, your first-person shooter. And I love the Mech Warrior games. They were just. Especially the Mech War Mercenary games. They were so good. Um, but Battletech came out. Paradox backing it. Harebrain Scheme Studios doing it. Uh, and as soon as it came out, I bought it. And then what did I do? I, I have to explain this. This is this because this is kind of what blows me away about uh, the way people make choices when they design games. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit. The first thing we need to do is get these things done. Tech world generator world. I gotta get I gotta get the advancements here. Like in this world right here. Um let's add an energy grid to them even though we're gonna need more alloys soon. And then here, this is the research world, but it doesn't have any amenities because we don't have a commercial dome down on it yet. And then right here, we do have a commercial zone, but we don't have robots. Oh, and you can put crystal mines on this one. Very nice. Okay. So on all of our worlds, like this one, this thing can get replaced by something else. We should put an energy grid on it. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit while this is running deal with them um when i first started playing battletech i i got in i loaded up the game i love the way it looked i love the opening cutscenes. i love everything and the look about it is fantastic the interface is nice it's clean and then you get this first introduction they start you right off first introductory mission they put you in a mech and you know they, you've got a guy saying shoot this thing and run into this thing over here and go to this waypoint so that you kind of get acclimated to the controls and then they throw you right into a firefight great but you don't know what anything is and then it's only after like the introduction part of the game is over that you get the very first real mission you go on that they start to pop up the tutorial they start to pop up the tutorial dialogues that say this part of your ui means this and this yellow line means this and etc 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 all information that would have been incredibly useful to have when you first start the game in that very first introductory mission and i couldn't understand why they didn't do it and so because i only played the first introductory mission and i thought this looks neat but i have no idea what's going on 
and situation log updated. And like any game, like Stellaris or Galactic Civilizations 3 or Civ games or Fallen Enchantress or any kind of or XCOM 2, anytime you're playing one of these very detailed strategy games with a lot of depth to it. Concluded. And this goes for role playing games too. This is kind of why I love them. They have so much depth, but it's also that depth creates all this complexity. And it's a lot of complexity. And so you're left there kind of floundering, saying, I, I know, I know when I get a hold of a game like Stellaris or when I get a hold of a game like Battletech for the first time, I know exactly how to approach it. Hit Google, start looking everything up get there with a the yellow legal pad next to me and start writing things down that are really important and then play the game and, and make the mistakes that you need to make to learn the hard lessons right but you gotta Construction project complete. there's so much yeah. knowledge you have to acquire to be to play those games and and when they when they have a chance to do something like pop a dialogue and say this is what this little bar means this is what this little icon over your over your character means when they have a chance to do that it makes everything so much easier for the player and to hold that back until construction project oh that's the embassy complex right there so if I raise that up it gives me two more envoys okay I already had it on my home world great I'm gonna do that when you have a chance to pop those icons pop those dialogues and explain things to the player and you wait to do it, what happens is exactly what happened to me with Battletech. I played the intro mission, I felt lost. I knew I was gonna need to do a whole bunch of homework in order to play the game. And so I just set it off to the side and was like, eh, I'll do it later. Well, now we have a pandemic and we're all locked at home and it's like, oh, I actually have a bunch of time. And I had a friend telling me, he's like, man, it's a really good game. I'm spending a lot of time on it. I know how much you love XCOM. I know how much you like strategy games. You need to play this game. So fortunately, I had a friend who prodded me to start playing Battletech the other night. And and uh, he's absolutely right. It's totally up my alley. I absolutely love it already. And I'm not that far into it. Um, but it's just, it's a blast and it's exactly what I was hoping it could be. It's just, it's fun, but that's the thing. I, I set it aside for how long's the game been out a year longer. I just set it aside because after 20, 30 minutes with the game, I felt overwhelmed. And if they would have just popped those dialogues that they popped in the first, in the second mission, if they would have done that during the first introductory mission, like after the after the intro guy is done telling you deploy an administrative task force, if they would have popped those dialogues on you after that guy said, "Okay, now you know how to now you know how to walk and crawl and run, and you, you know how to shoot, and you know how to bash into other mechs," now we're ready to go on this mission. If they would have done it then, instead of waiting. I would have been way more hooked on the game and I would have kept playing it. But that feeling of being overwhelmed is a really bad feeling to have. And um, and I think game companies do a disservice to players when they don't give them as much help as possible early on. Especially with games that are super complicated. Because... Um, <laughs> it's there's a lot to the game that's the thing there's just a lot to the game and you have a lot to learn and a lot to pick up and a lot to grok and it's just it's it's a lot so i'm happy i'm playing it now but and i'm kind of disappointed that i waited so long to play it but it, it just that feeling of being over i know what that feeling of being overwhelmed is you know uh uh I have so many stories to tell. Um, if you've ever stared at a whole lot of work and felt completely overwhelmed by the amount of work you were staring at, whether it's you just bought a new house that's a fixer-upper and you're like, oh man, this is years worth of work. Maren Karen. <laughs> I have to tell a funny joke after this upper management retrail but the first thing i want to say is i want to finish that thought if you've ever stared at a whole lot of work maybe you lived with a hoarder once like i did like i used to a long time ago and you're staring at cleaning that up 
it's or or buying a house like i said that that is a fixer upper or anytime you're just looking at a huge amount of work and you just feel demotivated that's what it was like to look at BattleTech for the first time and realize yeah i know i can learn all this stuff i know i can and i could probably even learn it and put a tutorial together <laughs> With a lot of with a lot of good icons and a lot of good drawings and circles and all kinds of colored things that I like to do, I could probably put a, a, a tutorial together for Battletech that would rock people's socks off. But the process of learning all that stuff is is long and it's daunting, and so it just it creates a demotivation in you. Marin Karen, upper management betrayal. It appears that the crack team of administrators we sent to Hawkeye Prime in order to set things straight have been turned. Well, you know, good drugs will do that. Fortunately for us, their plot to do as little work as possible was unsurprisingly sloppily executed and easily discovered. <laughs> all I can think of now, all I can see in my brain is a picture of Red Foreman saying, dumbass. <laughs> Heads will roll, metaphorically speaking, of course. As our last recourse is to, to depose the local government and manage calling these fair from the camel. It won't be pretty. Um, it's... <laughs> Madden Cadden. Um my wife told me about a funny joke that our, our now thirteen year old stepson said her son, my stepson. And uh, a declaration of war has been announced. She, my wife owns a restaurant. I think I've mentioned that in previous episodes. And now with the coronavirus here, there's a real challenge for her to keep taking orders without a staff. Um, and to do all the roadside curbside pickup and deliveries and all that stuff. So, of course, it's the kids are out of school because school, all the schools are closed. So she has uh, enlisted our stepson to help with taking orders over the phone and carrying orders out to people who are waiting at the curb Special with their cars. And he realized, Marin and Karen work over flowers. Society research gain, research from jobs, great. Far-reaching changes to time management paradigms and the way responsibility is delegated within all fields of production and other duties on Hawkeye Prime have produced good results. The populace has evident desire, outside observers would call it an outright need, to be close proximity to the native flora. With clever scheduling and additional checks in place, productivity remains low but has risen above the lower limit of what can be deemed acceptable. They've changed to a three-day-a-week work week. But anyway, the point was, so our our uh, our stepson, my stepson, taking orders over the phone, realizes he's got this woman's name wrong. Research concluded. And he tells my wife, he says, I just figured out Sharon is Karen. <laughs> and of course, the double entendre for that is too funny. Sharon is Karen, right? And my wife said she just couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> and I was like, well, I can see why. <laughs> Sharon is Karen. <laughs> it's like, okay, yep, that's our life. That's that's our life around these parts. Our kids are entertaining and often quite humorous. They're great kids. We, we are so fortunate to have really good kids. I'm going to resettle some of these people somewhere else. Has a few more jobs. Hawkeye Prime, in fact, has some. Um... Wait a minute. Let's. Okay. Here's the thing. Before you have a ring world or habitats, you got to be careful who you move, when you move, and how you move. Because you want them to end up on planets. It, see, and we have some fast robots. So this is great. You want to end up on planets where they match the, the habitability. Um. We have some fast robots we can resettle. So they can resettle anywhere. The fast robots. We, we can put those guys anywhere. Uh, we could put them on the tomb world, in fact. That's might not be such a bad idea. Okay, so we got fast robots moved. And in fact, um, we still have what? We got two unemployed specialists. They we don't have robots doing specialist jobs yet. Oh yeah, we do. We got a gas extractor. Take that out, and that immediately gives it to a miner. We can move crystal miner. We can move that fast robot as well. And now those two specials will take those jobs. 
Well, they should have. What are you guys doing, you boners? All right. Back on this colony, we're like, hey, we got extra people. Yeah. We're going to create a robot job there. We're going to put a gene clinic there. We're going to upgrade that building. And we're going to provide them with some more of these. A couple more of these. We're going to build out ahead of time and let it just build. We have the money to support it. So let's do it. So that planet's hooked up for a while. All right, Hawkeye, you've you've had this science ship for a while. Marin Karen, Sharon is Karen. With an iron fist from afar, our remote government of Hawkeye Prime is now firmly established. It's met with some success in suppressing the proliferation of the pollen-bearing plant Marin Karen, as well as in eroding the community's acceptance of using it. No small feat considering the act is as innocent as smelling a flower. Imagine if getting high from marijuana was a small high and it was as easy as going outside and breathing there. I think we would all feel a lot better about that. Uh, so that's funny. We have this planet over here. Now we just got our empire sprawl back under control so I don't necessarily want to go get that yet. And there is the alien entity, an enigmatic guest, is here. He may be able to lift us up or he may not. Or One of these planets, this planet, you need four more pops on that planet before you can. So on this planet, I want to take a look at the population. What are you making? You're making farmers. That's great. I want to make sure everybody's making what they should be making as far as robots go. This planet should be making farmers make farmers i don't mind the little penalty is i don't mind the small 10 percent penalty that you get for specifying a particular robot species it's 10 percent to the current assembly progress because i'd rather have the correct bonus 15 percent to his jobs special project concludes. the enigmatic cash despite extensive research the enigmatic cash yeah okay so it's gonna do its thing we get this every time it's awesome if you can get it to work right um so what do you got food here nope you need to be energy here oops well speaking of the marin karen flora fauna that still Turns out to be one of the ways that I feel confident that I don't have or have yet had the coronavirus because my allergies are still just, they're just storming. They're great. <laughs> they're fantastic. Oh, allergies, you stink. Okay. These guys can just make fast robots. These guys here can make what? Food robots. Farmers. These guys here, what are they making? Miners. Yes, make miners. Hot Cry Prime, what are you making? You need to be making miners. Make them. And Kaiser Prime, you just started yours. You need to make what? Miners. Great. Make miners. And right here, Fantastico. You're going to make miners and then, or fast robots, either one. So. Make miners for now. Fast robots have pop housing usage and pop assembly speed. That negates some of it. On this particular planet, we could probably just let it make anybody at one and two and we could move some people around. So we might do that instead. Yeah, make any species grow a little faster. We need technicians. So we need fast robots and we need miners. And if we get food guys, we can move them around to another planet. So there's that. Um, all right, you're Hawkeye Prime, but Hawkeye Prime is not a research planet. This guy is. All right, now what I want. Buildings and districts have their build cost reduced and build speed improved or building and upkeep. Yeah, and district upkeep. Either one of those is nice. What's underneath this? City districts provide additional housing. We're going to need that sooner than anything. So uh, this is what we're got going on toward the end of this episode these guys are never going to give us construction project concluded. they're never going to give us what we want which is an immigration treaty 
the migration treaty in the Negrant Thousand Nights. Mary and Karen Slash and Burn, our remote governance of Hawkeye Prime continues to be somewhat awkward but effective arrangement. Well, you know, we're all working remote these days, so this kind of fits, right? The council in charge has allegedly secured the loyalty of a faction of our armed forces on the planet. Apparently, they prefer staying indoors to breathing in the Marion Karen pollen, also known as COVID-19. The remote government wishes to use these troops to mount an offensive on the flower, having them erect atmospheric purifiers and wiping the plant from all urban areas. Should have done this a long time ago. Okay, well... The Consolidated Zikmuk, yeah. The Bokey Hive Mind. So, yeah, and these guys can't give us a migration treaty because they're a Gestalt Consciousness. We don't have any... any good choices for the desert guys. Oh, who are the Apathy Star Tribes? Who are they? They need to be uplifted? Oh, they're marauders. Let's see. Okay, well, let's do this then. Let's buy some of this. Research concluded. Sell some of this. All right, zero point reactor. We're on our way to getting the mega structure stuff. It's a uh, well. It's crazy. Anyway, this is going to be the end of the episode. I've done a lot of rambling on this one, but um, our, our takeaways from this episode, don't defend broken game mechanics. Uh, Battletech is awesome, and so is Hairbrain Schemes. And 13-year-olds are funny. Um, as always, folks, thanks for watching. If you dig the episode, give it a thumbs up. If you have a question or comment, drop it down below. And if you want to drop it with the timestamp about five seconds ahead of whatever point you're trying to point out, that's so helpful to me. I really love all you folks who use the timestamps in your comments. You're the best. Um, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, do. And if you um, want to support the Patreon down below, do it. I've had two people support the Patreon, and I'm not sure I mentioned it earlier. Slice99, I think, was the second Patreon support. Um, dude, you guys are awesome. I mean, yeah, if that's what you want to do, you know, if you could throw a coffee cup's worth of Patreon support my way per month, uh, that's going to be great, and I will try to find some way to give back to all of you. I talked about it when we did... I said a long time ago, if we could ever get to a thousand subscribers, I want to do some kind of giveaway. And now we're at 3000 and something and it's just growing. So I really want to do some kind of games giveaway, like maybe three games on Steam so I can gift them to people. Um, that'd be really cool. So I need to make a video about that this weekend so we can do some kind of little sweepstakes so people can take the have enough time to find me on Steam, friend me and say I want to be part of the sweepstakes and then I'll, we'll get some people some games. For fun because that's a that's a fun thing to do and it's a pandemic everybody wants to stay home and be safe and what better way to do that and play some video games so if there's something you've been hankering around for a while and you're like colors fade might give me a game because i'm a loyal watcher whose channel yes yes i just might do that i think that's a really cool idea so let's get let's do a little bit you guys patreon supporters to me and uh i'll do a little give back to to you guys all right Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. This is fun. And the, the next series after this should be fun too.